Uh, today I'm going to present uh, some, the results of some testing I did um, with a uh, GNU radio uh, receiver along with a uh, typical NASA vendor modem modulator. So uh, for this conference, the uh, conference leadership did encourage um, papers based maybe more on demonstrations than simulations. Um, they also encourage presentations from a kind of tutorial perspective. So I'm going to try to do that. Hopefully this will be useful to, to new users. I, I'm only uh, probably a user for about a year myself. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, my background, uh, currently I work at the uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center for a uh, contractor uh, named Periton. Um, the one disclaimer is uh, really all the materials in here, the uh, presentation, the associated paper that will be in the proceedings is really based on my own personal perspectives, personal opinions, uh, not NASA's. So about one year ago, I was looking for uh, alternatives to MATLAB Simulink for uh, some communication system simulation um, activities. Uh, so I went ahead and I, I found that GNU Radio could be a good fit for that, a good cost-effective fit, low cost. And uh, so I also found out that you know, GNU Radio could really be uh, used as a uh, software-defined modem, a low-cost one, at data rates uh, NASA typically uses at S-Ban. So I went ahead and started developing the GNU Radio SDR receiver and then tested it along with a, uh, a typical NASA vendor modem modulator. So again, I'm trying to do this from a tutorial perspective uh, to describe uh, how I developed the GNU radio SDR receiver and then tested it with the uh, NASA vendor modem. So again, the scope will be kind of a tutorial perspective. Uh, hopefully this will help new users so that they can maybe quickly build or implement a, a good cost-effective uh, GNU radio SDR receiver or modem. Okay. Uh, this chart is high level for the test configuration. It's a back-to-back -back test configuration. Uh, the NASA vendor modem modulators on the left um, it transmitted over a coaxial cable, 50 ohms SMA, with a 1.2 gigahertz uh, intermediate frequency to the uh, GNU radio SDR receiver. I used BPSK and QPSK. Okay, uh, this chart shows the uh, parts I used to uh, develop the uh, GNU radio receiver. Uh, the Dell laptop, which is this one actually here, uh, Linux, and the uh, GNU radio software version 3.7.11. Um, the uh, RTL SDR hardware dongle, uh, just $28 uh, commercial off the shelf. Um, had a, has a uh, USB interface on one side to connect to the laptop. Um, has an SMA 50 ohm uh, interface to connect to the IF signal. Um, and the dongle does the frequency tuning. And it also down converts to digital IF, which I sometimes call um, zero hertz IF. And I get, just got that on Amazon. Uh, the BPSK uh, test case, this would be the uh, flow graph, the GNU radio flow graph for BPSK. And um, let's see. on the left is the RTL SDR uh, source block that controls the uh, dongle. Uh, the other main blocks are the polyphase clock sync block that does the symbol synchronization, the Costas loop that does the carrier synchronization. And um, the other blocks are really support blocks that I'll be showing on the next chart. Okay, the uh, support blocks for real-time monitoring during the uh, tests had the uh, time sync block, which does the oscilloscope functions, uh, frequency sync block, uh, have an IQ constellation sync block uh, to monitor carrier synchronization and performance. For QPSK, the uh, flow graph was uh, pretty similar. Uh, the only difference was the Costas loop there. The order is now four rather than two. And all those blocks at the bottom, the, the multipliers, um, I used those to resol uh, resolve carrier lock phase ambiguity. Um, 
So since this is a, really a tutorial uh, type presentation, I wanted to, since I was a new user, uh, list a couple things here that gave me trouble when I was developing the, uh, the receiver, the TAPS parameter in the polyphase clock sync block, and just getting that RTL SDR source block into the GNU block um, library. So on the clock sync, uh, basically um, you need to type in a lot of stuff there for the uh, FIR root raise cosine filter, and then it is a function of uh, a few parameters there, the samples per symbol, uh, the root raised cosine roll-off factor. Uh, L would be the length of the prototype filter for the block. Um, that probably could be an entire presentation on itself on that and how the block is built. So you just, for a new user, just put in 11, maybe 13 will work and you'll be off and running. Uh, number of filters um, in the polyphase filter bank, um, set that to 32 uh, is a good number that I used. So all you need to do is type in the uh, FIR, root raised cosine, 32, 64, 10.5, and 704, and that should get you off and running pretty quickly, especially if you're a, a new user. Um, the C++ code um, is in GitHub. It's on the uh, GNU radio GitHub, and that really does provide a lot of useful insight into the details of the blocks. So I'm still going through it myself. Um, for the uh, addition of the source block, the RTL source block, um, I found this one uh, command for the Linux terminal, uh, sudo gr hyphen osmo sdr, and that allowed me to um, load the entire GNU radio software along with the source block then in the, uh, in the library. Uh, the development process, um, I did that in four steps. First, the simulation. Um, I basically uh, just used the GNU radio simulation modulator blocks along with the receiver blocks to get going, get the hang of GNU radio. Uh, then I went out and uh, bought the, uh, the RTL dongle. Um, I, it came with an antenna when I bought it. Um, so I tested it with FM stations, get, a, get the hang of the dongle, get the hang of uh, GNU radio. Then I went out and bought a signal generator, um, a low cost one for uh, BPSK, and all it could do is a 1010 pattern. I brought that with me, so hopefully I can get all that running here. There's some time. And then the last uh, step was to go to the remote facility where the uh, vendor modem was to do the, the actual testing. So the test approach, again, I did two test cases, BPSK and QPSK. Um, the settings on the, uh, on the blocks in the flow graph were pretty much the same for both uh, modulations, um, except for the uh, Costas loop block. The order was uh, different, and that was about it. And then I used a uh, repeating 15-bit uh, pattern for the testing. So during the testing, I, the, the performance was good. I was able to recover the transmitted bit stream from the modulator, achieve symbol synchroniz synchronization lock, achieve carrier synchronization lock. Um, the next charts will show how I concluded that. Uh, basically, this is a snapshot of the time sync block display during the testing. And this shows the 15 bits. Um, and I had it refreshing at the same rate, so I could look at it for five minutes, 10 minutes, and make sure things look good and weren't slipping. Uh, the frequency spectrum during the test, um, from the uh, frequency sync block uh, display, a snapshot here. Um, you can see the uh, oscillations maybe about every 60 kilohertz are due to the repeating bit pattern. If I had a much, much longer bit pattern, it would look more like BPSK from your textbook. So um, the IQ constellation before the Costas loop block. Um, this is before I removed the residual frequency offset uh, between the vendor modem modulator and the RTL SDR hardware dongle. So they're, even though they're both set at the same frequency, 1.2 gigahertz, there's a little difference, so that rotation is there. This is just a uh, static snapshot. So um, 
Uh, maybe when I do the demo, you can see the rotation that occurs. Now, after the Costas loop, now you have the more typical good IQ constellation that you, that you expect with BPSK. So this is after the Costas loop, and now the uh, residual frequency offset has been removed. So this chart, this chart really uh, just shows the uh, residual frequency offset removal before the Costas loop and after. Equation one would be the incoming signal before the Costas loop out of the dongle. And equation two at the bottom, that would be for after the Costas loop, and it's been removed, and yet now you just have the phase that, that you want, the two phases uh, for PPSK and the four phases for QPSK. So um, the conclusions on here, uh, within the scope of this uh, initial testing, now I didn't, it's just a subset I tested of typical NASA waveforms. Um, didn't test all of them. Um, for example, phase modulation with a subcarrier. But within the scope, um, the GNU radio receiver was compatible with some uh, NASA modems, waveforms, and uh, also data rates that uh, they use at S-band you know, up to a couple megabits per second. Um, so what, what can we use GNU radio uh, now for maybe, in my opinion, um, in a NASA ground station or really any satellite ground station? Um, it could be used as a, a mobile test tool maybe. Uh, it's compact light, has spectrum analyzer functions, oscilloscope functions, it can act as a receiver. So it could be very good for troubleshooting without buying a lot more expensive modems for that. Um, it's probably a good uh, tool for uh, education and training of uh, operations teams, uh, maintenance teams, that kind of thing, including end-to-end -end link simulations. Um, I already did a couple demos for a couple of the NASA engineers and a few uh, engineers at my company. Um, and some other things, we could use it as a low-cost digital IF recorder or maybe a baseband data recorder. And of course, the forward work would be adding a lot more blocks, like the PMD modulation with a subcarrier. Um, a modulator, of course, is not included yet. Um, I'll need a new, another dongle. Um, coding and Doppler. Now, the equalizer, if I can get the, uh, the demo going, I've already added that to the uh, flow graph. So let me see if I can uh, get that running really quick. I should have a few minutes, right? That was the end of my charts. Let's be careful here. It seems it's already running on the screen. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So everyone can see it. Um, so that's the uh, symbol synchronizer right now. Um, after the symbol synchronizer, it's synced up and it's rotating there. The static one on the bottom is the one zero one zero uh, bit for each tip of the triangle. And um, the spectrum is there. Since it's a 1010 repeating pattern only, you can see just the spikes at 512 uh, kilohertz there. Can I push this one down? Since yours is on here. No. OK, no, OK. It is your mouse. OK, yeah. Oh, OK, good. OK, I got it. Here's the rotation. You can see that one. Um, on the vendor modem, it, it was kind of more constant and slower. This is a $90 signal generator. It probably doesn't have a great oscillator, but it still works. The IQ constellation on the bottom is right after the Costas loop, so it's, it's pulled it out, gotten rid of the uh, residual frequency offset. And then the one at the top, the one that says AVI, we call them adaptive baseband equalizers, um, you can see that the constellation has been tightened up. So uh, this is basically what I was looking for. So I, I think that was really it. So hopefully that was useful and worth the wait. So that was really it. Okay. Thank you.